Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time to listen. My name is Nicole, and today I title this message, When Family Are In and Out of Jail. When Family Are In and Out of Jail. Recently, we, as a family, we check in on some names. We find out where some people are, especially when we don't see them for a while. We do our share of research. It's quite easy to figure out some things when people aren't doing that much talking about different relatives like they used to. They're not posting up pictures with them present like they used to. There's like an absence, if you will, and you know the person's not dead. You hear through the grapevine that somebody got in trouble, but they don't tell you if that trouble put the person in jail or not until you find out through various sources. When family are in and out of jail, there are those who are okay and all right with it because they have their share of dirt that they're up to. And they're just grateful that they're not in jail. So the only time they get spiritual is when they're saying, thank you, Jesus, I'm not in jail. But somebody took the fall for someone. Somebody ended up behind bars because they love someone so much. And they didn't want that person to get in trouble. Others end up in jail because they simply do crimes and so they pay the price. But then you got this group that my heart goes out to who they're in and out of jail. But it's a lot of things tied to a tormented past. There's some mental issues going on. And the facility that's supposed to correct can't correct because they are not knowledgeable in the spiritual. They are not able to tap into the one true God in such a way where people end up being healed. Instead, for some, all they know how to do is lock them up. They're not interested in what type of mental illness just get off the street. They don't want to know why they're in and out just so long as they're not coming and going out of my house. And I understand on all sides, but I also hurt inside because some folks were born in this world where they didn't even get a fighting chance. Hear me when I say this. They were born in this world and weren't even given a fighting chance. You see, there were the relatives who had their share of mental health issues and their mental health issues ended up causing them to do some things that were real disruptive, destructive, and just created a lot of disappointment in the family. And so the child looks at all of these so-called examples and these examples are poor examples and that's all he or she knows is to do some dirty things, and so they're in and out of jail. First is juvie, or the juvenile detention center. Then it is that place that they like to call the correctional facility, aka jail. They get out, they are happy, they claim they're not going to get in trouble again, that they're going to do what's right, and then they're back in jail again. They claim that they're going to be productive members of society, stellar citizens. I'm here for my kids. I'm going to do whatever it takes to be there for my family. And that was just a bunch of talk. Back in jail, they go. Back in jail, they go. I know that some of you family members want to believe that lie once again. I know that some of you family members want to trust that that one's not going to abuse, use. 
but then they do it. Some folks will even tell us, don't get your hopes up high. I don't want you to be let down. Don't get your hopes up high. This is an individual that is causing problems once again. And I guess going to jail is just not going to help him or her this go rounds. You see, some of them, they end up being freed, but by the time they get their freedom, they end up dying, murdered, strange accidents, peculiar things take place, health issues. God allowed it. Let me say that again. God allowed it. Sometimes the only peace that some people are going to get is through death. And we're not talking about taking one's life. Sometimes it's just a situation or many situations that lead that person toward their premature death. Because the mind is not right. Someone once told me that cousin or cousins of yours, their mind isn't right. Your uncle or uncles, their mind is not where it should be. Sometimes the only thing that a person can do is just watch as well as pray. Because some people, they simply get burnt out with all of the ripping and running to go see somebody in jail. They get tired of putting money out to bail someone out. They get tired of believing that a person has changed and they're going to be a good little boy, good little girl, and they're not. Some of them will say all sorts of things to convince us that this time I'm innocent, but we know different. In and out of jail, stealing, lying, killing, abusing, using. Mocking the people of God. I'm going to throw that in. I don't want to hear what you got to say. Okay, fine. I knew that there was a future ahead that was going to be quite dark and disturbing for one particular relative. And I decided that I was going to visit this person before he went to jail. And the Lord instructed me to bring a family history book up to the jail. And most of the people who he admired in that book had died. And he cradled the book and he cried and he cried. The plan was to shake him up, stir him up a bit to stay out of jail. The story was, was that he managed to not go to jail that particular year or the next. Matter of fact, there were many times that he hadn't gone to jail, even though he had a history of being in and out of jail. There was some type of favor that even his ex-girlfriend at the time couldn't explain. But then the time comes, as I've told many people on these audio messages, the time comes where there is no favor and you've got to do your time. And some people curse God. And when people show up and they want to pray and they want to talk God, faith, religion, anything like that, they shut them down. Because they feel like God should be like that guy who's riding or driving the getaway car. You supposed to look out. You supposed to hook me up. If you're about all it is being there for everybody, protecting them and loving them, then how come you can't or you won't or maybe you don't exist? And so we leave those individuals alone. We can pray for them. We can pray for their salvation, but we cannot argue with them. Otherwise, we find ourselves getting offended because, you know, the demonic is going to move on them to say all sorts of evil things. You may be one of them. 
feel like God should have been there. He should have been like a ride or die. But you should know better not to humanize God. You should know better. God is not like you. God's not a pimp, a player, a hustler. I know I'm not talking to everybody in this message. I'm just talking to some. Some who contemplate on doing some things that's going to lead them in a, what, corrections facility? And you already know you've been in and out of jail. What correction takes place? It's just one big old party for some people. What correction takes place? It's a game on the inside for some. They hustling inside and outside. They pimping inside, outside. Don't matter that they're the same sex. They playing inside, outside. I want some people to be free. But I know that there are some people who will not be free in this lifetime because their mental issues have them bound. No matter what, once again, we say to some people, they are not going to receive the truth. God told me that their minds are reprobate. That's why they keep doing what they're doing. God is not even with them any longer. They're like Nebuchadnezzar out there in the wild. They're in this season where they've lost their minds. The doctors even told them to take their medicine while they were on the outside and they said no. There were sisters and mothers and grandmothers and there were brothers and uncles. Their own children speaking to them and telling them, you got to get some help. You got to take your medicine. You're doing all these things because your mind is telling you something that is not right. Your flesh is overriding your spirit. You can't talk sense in a crazed mind or to a crazed mind. As much as you want to, for some people, they were born, born to be on the side of darkness because of what their mothers and their fathers did, because of what the others before their their mothers and fathers did. There are those generational curses that some of you all, you take too lightly. Matter of fact, for some people, they didn't even bother to pray those type of prayers. They didn't even think about those type of prayers. Generational curses be broken in Jesus name. Generational curses be broken in Jesus name. And how do you keep that faith, that belief in knowing that? A generational curse has been broken. You don't keep walking in that thing that your mama and your mama's mama and your mama's mama walked in. You don't keep doing what your daddy and your daddy's daddy and your daddy's daddy did. Some of these individuals that folks like to gossip and talk about, they're in and out of jail because of the types of influences that have been around them for so long. They're in and out of jail because of, yes, there are the peer pressures, but then there's also a mind, though, that simply tells them to do some things that your mind wouldn't tell you to do because you got all your faculties, your senses about you. But for other people, they don't. And folks want to get up on their high horse and they want to talk about what people should and shouldn't do. But some folks, they can't receive the message because their mind is not allowing them to receive it. But for those who have an ear, let them hear. We cannot mock God and say that God is not healing and God is not freeing. God has to have a way in. And one has to be willing to let God in. And one who has a crazed mind isn't thinking about God. And once again, we got to look at the fact that sometimes God has allowed certain things to happen. He allowed certain things to happen with Nebuchadnezzar. He allowed some things to happen with David. And David was after God's heart. He allowed some things to happen with Adam and Eve. I mean, this is a God that, yes, we love him. Yes, we praise him. But he's also... A harsh disciplinarian at times. 
Because why? Some people just don't want to be corrected. The parent didn't want to be corrected. So, okay, you're going to watch your son suffer now. You're going to watch your grandson suffer. Some people are not resting in peace. They're ghosts. I've said this in other audio. They're literally watching, literally watching everything unfold before them. And there's nothing they can do about it, but just watch. The Lord says, you see what your actions have done? Some people say, oh, no, so-and-so is resting in peace. Uh Uh-uh, we keep having these people who conjure up to see spirits, which I've gotten into on this channel by calling them out. Sons and daughters, grandsons, great-grands, and all of that won't let the deceased rest messing around with all sorts of rituals. And some folks think that it's the deceased that's coming back, but it's not. Instead, there's demonic spirits that guise themselves as those ones that came before some family members and friends. People mess around with all sorts of things in and out of jail. Continuing on with this message, when one is enslaved mentally, eventually he or she is going to be enslaved physically. When one is enslaved spiritually, sexually, eventually there are other factors that play into this enslavement that so-called empowers when really there is no empowering. There's just more bondage. You can recognize that when you see a body behind bars. But can you recognize that when you yourself are outside looking in? And you have allowed your mind to be so wrapped into everybody else's enslavement that you can't even see that you are enslaved. Some folks are gossipy and they are saying so many negative and disrespectful and foul things because for the simple fact is, is that it takes their attention away from their own personal as well as professional bondage. We got some people that even though they're not physically in and out of a jail cell, they are in and out of jobs that enslave them. One who has been in captivity can see other people's enslavement all too well. Some of you all, you have even talked to some people and said, I've been there. I know what that is. You are on that path toward jail. And some folks are like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I know that mindset because it starts with the mind. Talking crazy, acting crazy, being accused of being crazy. Next thing you know, crazy and put you in jail. You see, that's why we've got to arrest the spirits of enslavement. We've got to put those spirits to rest. When we know that there is unrest in an atmosphere, we not only pray prayers and send those demons back into the abyss, but we also see that mind that is also showing physical signs that it is in some type of demonic captivity And we call the necessary authorities at that point. Sometimes you can get away with just walking over and doing something similar to Jesus. Where you're just stretching your hands out toward the community or toward the person. And you're just asking that peace will come over them in Jesus' mighty name. I see and And then other times, God says, I'm not hearing your prayers. And this is what hurts some moms and some dads. I got to turn my back on my child. Your child didn't want to listen. Your child has caused so many problems for so many different people. Your child thought that he or she was right. When he or she was very wrong. 
moms and dads who have coddled their children for far too long, society's not going to coddle them. Society is going to chew them up and spit them out. And as much as mothers and fathers want to freak out and they want to blame everybody but the child who's at fault, all of that can cause you to go crazy if you're that type of parent. Because you don't want to let God be God. You don't want to allow God to move upon that child or children who keep causing problems. You keep intervening with your money, with your mouth, with threats, with trying to get some people who are already in trouble, trying to get them to do your dirt. Let that child suffer. I'm hearing that in the spirit. Somebody God saw, he saw when you ran, he saw when you wrote the letters, he saw when you went and talked to officers and talked to witnesses, he saw when you were here, there, and everywhere for that child, but now the Lord says, let that child go, because see, what happens is, once again, that mind can go mad, and the next thing you know, you wondering why you walking with handcuffs or shackles. Somebody be free right now in the name of Jesus. Let this be the last time that you end up in jail. Be corrected in Jesus' mighty name. For some of you others, let this be the last time that you do something that gets you in trouble with law enforcement in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for listening. May God be with you. Be with your soul. Be with your mind. Be with those who are sick and afflicted mentally, physically, spiritually, sexually. Lord Jesus, have your way this day. Hallelujah. We give you honor. We give you praise, Lord Jesus, because we know that we are nothing without you. Be with those who are in captivity. Those that have a mind. They still have a mind, Lord Jesus. Work with them like only you can. And take that desire to want to sin and get away with sin from their spirits in Jesus' mighty name. Let them be changed. No more wishing to be like children in darkness or walking as a child of darkness. Be free. Be free. God wants to hear from you. I'm talking to a few people in the network. God wants to hear from you. Don't let people push you back behind bars. And those who still have hope about being free, keep those prayers and petitions up. God hears. And when God moves, he'll move in his time, not ours. Not ours. I got relatives that went in young, and by the time they do get out, they're going to be very old. I've got those who get some kind of favor, they're in and out of jail, some who should be in jail, but they don't because they figure, they figure ways to do some things and still stay out. We just turn it all over to the one true God. As much as it hurts, as much as you're so angry with some of these folks for what they keep doing, We got to keep turning it over to the one true God and ask him to order your foot, your footsteps in Jesus name. Thank you as always for listening. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube and I'm Enterprise 7. To God be the glory.